Per usual, our English channels for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. It's Tuesday. Let's talk about some indicators here. Probably a lesser known indicator that doesn't see a lot of traction these days outside of myself. Honestly, I don't know who else talks about fractals, not in the uh, shape sense, but in a very specific technical definition. Uh, Bill Williams, no longer with us, sadly, lost in uh, 2019 RIP, was a trader who developed uh, this system. And here's a really good overview of his work, of his chaos theory. I don't quite buy into all of it, but it's an interesting read. If you're looking to dive a little deeper on the creator's thoughts and how this came to be. Um, this also goes along with a few other indicators or potential checks and balance type stuff, right? Similar to cloud, this is trend following. That's why I gravitated to it. It's non-subjective, a lot of it. That's why I like it. So it's really good in trend environments, uh, much like cloud, when things are trendless, when things are noisy, when things are extremely volatile things like this become less useful and I'll go over that. So specifically what I want to talk about is the alligator and the fractals. The alligator is essentially three MAs. Fractals I'll define in a second. Uh, I'm going to avoid talking about the awesome oscillator. Another thing I don't really see anyone talking about uh, anymore. Some of the old ways have been lost with the sands of time here, but we'll look at MACD and how we can add that to the uh, checks and balances. One other thing you'll probably notice as you learn more about different styles of TA. A lot of this is fairly new, you know, within the last 7,500, 50 years. Kind of interesting how all of it sort of led to this retail trading phenomenon eventually over time. It's like I said, Bill Williams, American trader, he's put out a ton of stuff over the years and there are still some surviving videos here of uh, <laughs> what he did during his seminars or his talks. I think in one of these, he talks about the markets being kind of like a fish tank and one dimension is just looking at it in a 2D plane. And then, you know, you can measure the O2 content of the water. You can measure the chemicals in the water. You can look at the 3D view. You know, he goes, he goes pretty deep into it. So we'll, we'll focus on the practical side today, but he's an interesting guy to listen to. Definitely. Definitely. Before I go any further, let me mention today's video sponsor, Kraken Pro. Kraken Pro is a complete overhaul of the Kraken trading experience with a one-stop shop for advanced and professional traders. Kraken Pro enables efficient trading execution across multiple markets with a UI that allows for unique optimization tailored to your trading style. So if you haven't checked out Kraken in some time or haven't played around with Kraken Pro, give it a whirl. Pretty slick UI, everything is completely customizable, which I absolutely love. And I did double check in their uh, charting trading view panel. You can add alligator and fractal to your charts. And I would definitely, you know, me personally, super visual, change colors, which I'll show you how to do in a second, just to make these more clear on your chart. And of course there's other, you know, random places on the internet where you can read about uh, fractals, learn about what they are, if this video doesn't speak to you and you want to learn more, Investopedia is just always a great place. They have ton of, tons and tons of info on pretty much everything. So it's a good place to start. So three moving averages, five, eight, and 13. Those are fibs, as they say here. So let's take a look at what that might look like. You know, if you need to add it to your chart in uh, Trading View or in Kraken Pro, you can just type in, uh, really type in Williams, right? I think they'll both show up. Alligator Fractals. And of course, there's, there's always going to be other stuff there. But on the alligator itself, once you pop that on, it should look fairly familiar. It's, you know, essentially just a set of three moving averages. He gives them specific names, jaw, teeth, lips. And there's some metaphors with the alligator opening the mouth, closing the mouth, essentially just saying, you know, we're in a trend, we're not in a trend. And of course, you can recolor these, make them a little thicker, because why not? I like things uh, bold and beautiful. <laughs> so um, one thing you'll notice immediately, much like moving averages, you know, we're bullish in this schematic, green, red, blue. We're bearish in blue, red, green. We can look at 2022 with this. One thing I'd also encourage with this combination is to use 
candlesticks and not line chart or something else. I mean, maybe you could probably use Heiken Ashi, which might help you as well. Uh, not something, again, not many people talk about Heiken Ashi anymore, but also very much a trend following system within the candlesticks, which is pretty cool. Um, you could certainly use that as part of your checks and balances for entries and exits. But let's stick to candles. So we've got our MAs on here. To go along, what you're looking for is a cross green, red, blue. Uh, to go short or to close along, you'd be looking for congestion or a cross, right? So much like the cloud, if you are above the moving averages, you're looking for longs. If you're below, you're looking for shorts. That's obviously key to watch this as it's happening so that you know when to start and stop looking for things. So that's sort of the 2D fish tank, you know, back to that analogy. If you're just looking at a fish tank, are we seeing happy fish? Or are the fish dead? Are there fish floating at the top? What's going on here? <laughs> um, do we need to change the water? Is it murky? So an earlier this year trend, obviously uh, bullish, right? Within the alligator itself, there is a stop loss built in this, this midline, the uh, red line there. If you get a candle close, and I get asked this question frequently, uh, candle close, not a wick, a candle close below the midline, and you're in an active trade in either side, uh, that would be a stop loss, definitely. So example here, example here, definitely example up here. Now you obviously don't know what this is gonna look like ahead of time, uh, but let's say you were short currently, you know, your stop loss would definitely be this midline. And I always like to look at what this is going to be uh, today versus, you know, what did it look like? 2022 is a great example because for most of 2022, we had an extremely bearish market. And what did the fractal, sorry, what did the alligator tell you over and over again? Um, in this region, you know, we had congestion, we had MAs crossing over and over again. We had a crisscross up here. We had go long, then go short, right? Or go long, close your long, get stopped out. And again, if you're above, you're long, you're short, or you're looking for longs, you're looking for shorts. When you're below the alligator entirely, you're only looking for shorts, okay? You're only looking to sell. So again, in 2022, here's the midline, and it kept you in the entire time, got you out here, okay, good. And now here's where the first problem comes in when you're looking at that 2D fish tank. We're still somewhat congested, congested, but we're also below that alligator line, you know, the green line there. So what do we do? And that's where the fractals come into play. Clean this up a lot. Um, but one way you could read this, and this may differ from what exactly has been taught, but one way you could read this is, okay, we're re-breaching the moving average. You know, that's an okay sign to re-enter on a position, on a short position, right? We haven't crossed on those MAs and telling us it's still safe to be short. And then where does it take you out? It takes you out way down here from a stop loss perspective. And so that's what, a 30% conservatively, 28% move? Love it, right? What about in 20, sorry, I'm trying to get to 2021, 20, 2020, what did that look like? Really the same sort of thing. Here's your stop loss and Here's your, you know, crisscross of the MAs finally. Now, again, you don't know that you were going to have a 200% run, right? But what this is helps setting up for you is creating an opportunity where a run may happen, right? It's sort of giving you a technical definition of bullishness or bearishness. And to be more specific, again, you want, you want green over red over blue. So really you don't get that maybe until here, right? Just using the replay function, you can sort of see what that looked like. Now by some definitions that may be late, right? And it doesn't, doesn't always work out. It doesn't always look pretty, but it's trying to get you into position based on the moving averages at the right time. Uh, a similar setup that didn't necessarily work out uh, was earlier in the year. Right. If we go back to here, maybe a few candles before that, or you get the cross, you're all the way at 1160. And then by the time, sorry, this uh, replay function isn't, isn't what it used to be trading view. 
Uh, by the time we are stopped out, really, you're kind of stopped out at what 11, 11 5. So you're long here based on the cross. Then you're kind of stopped out here. So I, you know, ideally, realistically, if you're waiting for these closes, you're basically stopped out at your entry, which is fine. It's not a loss, right? But it's not exactly setting you up for a great trade. Now you can always use your other knowledge of chart patterns and things, right? And maybe I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be, but I think you get the idea of the moving average system. You know, this isn't like rocket science. Most people know what moving averages are and how to use them. And again, here you're stopped out and then we're back above much like a Kumo breakout on the cloud and you're back in, right? And you're stopped out here. Then you get a crisscross on the alligator. You're back in, you're out, you know, you're in, you're out, right? And it can be very noisy when things stop trending. One last thing I'll look at with the alligator is the 2018 period. It's always good to look at what did things look like when things were trending because this is a trending indicator. And what did things look like when we weren't trending? Uh, obviously, what sticks out to me is stuff like this, right? Does Did it tell you to be long or short? Was there some sort of predisposition here in the market signaling uh, the short side? Now, it was subtle, but it was slightly there. You know, I wouldn't bet the farm on the downside based on this alone. But eventually, what this does do, it keeps you in, keeps you in, keeps you in. And based on the alligator alone, you're out here, which is a fine place to get out. You know, you're not looking at divergences. You're not looking at RSI, MACD. You're not looking at any of that other stuff. You're just looking at the alligator as a hard stop. Another great test for this would be 2018 because we bounced around quite a bit. To me, though, it looks fairly clean. It might not always give you great trades, but it certainly puts you in and keeps you in, puts you in, takes you out at arguably the right times. You know, so if anything, this is kind of a faster version of the cloud. You can use that this on any time frames. You can use it on the daily, four hour, weekly, right? Let's look at it on the weekly for, for Bitcoin here. So it really liked kind of the post SVB stuff continues to hold bullish, held bearish at the right times, held bullish at the right times. I mean, this is super clean on the weekly in 2020. And again, you don't know we're headed for a run when it looks like this, right? But at the very least, you can look at it while a move is in action and see, okay, are we, are we bullish? Are we bearish? Have we been bullish or bearish for a long time? Another measure of overbought, oversold, just like pretty much any indicator is how far away we are uh, from that midline. And you can see the farther we get in both the bullish case and bearish case from that midline, eventually that signals momentum uh, is very likely, it's a probability game, but it's very likely to pause or pull back, right? I mean, you can look at all sorts of instances of that. So the read today would be, yes, we're bullish. We're still bullish. We actually never closed below uh, that stop loss on the weekly this entire time in the current environment. And we continue to hold bullish. Stop loss would be a candle close below 27.2 in the current trend on the weekly, right? We're pretty much tight on the, the alligator. We are close to the midline, right? So all of this says the trappings of potential continuation. Still no concern from a bearish perspective. Let's go back to the daily. Let's turn on our uh, fractals now. And now we get maybe a different view of that fish tank. We're measuring uh, the ammonia now, right? Whatever it is, whatever analogy you want to use. And on TradingView or on Kraken Pro, wherever you use these, what you'll have to do to get them to look like this is to change the colors. Now, I call these bearish. I call the bottom fractals bullish. Really doesn't matter what you call them. It's just how you think of them, okay? So these will print. You'll get, we'll call it a support fractal. You'll get a support fractal when you get a high, low, high in the candlesticks, okay? And you'll get a resistance fractal when you get a, a low, high, low print in the candlesticks. Now these are delayed, so that is a bit of an issue. If you're in you know, an active trade and things are happening, uh, these don't look like they're delayed because we're looking at past data, right? But just as an example, this, this fractal right here didn't print until... Uh, this candlestick, right, was started. Okay, so you need you need the the low or the high, low, high, low, high, low, whatever it is on the chart 
before the fractal prints. And I believe the fractals print based on uh, wicks and not bodies of this, the candlesticks. All right, so how does this help you? Let's, let's do a for example in this current trend. So we're looking for shorts. Let's say we just pull up this chart. We're looking for shorts. We're below the alligator. Great. We're in the short territory. Now the next question is, now what do we do, right? Do we just immediately open a short blindly? Uh, well, you could, uh, or you could use these candlesticks as your friend, coupled with the fractals here. So if we were looking for a short in this specific environment, what we would want to see is a candle close below the wick of the support fractal. So basically it's telling you, yes, you have permission to re-enter or enter into a position because we're breaking local lows effectively. You know, that, that's essentially what this system is. It's constantly looking for local lows, local highs, and it's constantly telling you if we exceed or breach those levels above or below that it's okay to enter into a position. Now this isn't clean exactly. It's messy, which is a good thing. You know, you want to look at it when it's messy, when it's clean, you want to look at all varieties of this. And if we re rewind the tape, let's go back to just after that ripple news, right? So how would we read this just after the ripple news? Well, yes, we remained bullish. Great. Did we ever exceed a fractal? Now, what you can do is every time a fractal prints, you move your entry accordingly. And we are looking for a candle close above a fractal, right? And I'll zoom in in a second. It's probably hard to see. So I'm just drawing the lines to sort of visualize what I would be looking for. Uh, so fractal prints, no entries, new 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 fractal prints no entries until, oh, we get a candle print, right? So on July 13th, on the day of that uh, Ripple News fractal system would have said, yes, okay, here's an entry, finally. The first real entry since basically we reflipped bullish and we didn't reflip bullish you know, on this until basically 30K, 30.4. Not a great entry, right? So immediately when you do have an entry, your stop loss is where it's the midline of the alligator, right? So this is a great example of what happens when uh, things don't work out, right? Nothing's going to have a hundred percent hit rate on probabilities. It's nothing's going to have a hundred percent hit rate. It's all about probabilities. <laughs> so I said, Hey, based on the fractals alone, it's a good time to enter stop loss at that point would have been uh, midline. And we breached that midline. Additionally, when you're in active trades, much like the trailing entry system, there's a trailing stop loss system here. So let's say at any point, in this mess, in this soup, you were in an active long. Uh, same thing is, is applicable here. We are just applying stop losses essentially over and over and over again until we cross, you know, that key midline. Honestly, once you use it in a trade a couple times, it just becomes super simple to know what to do. So in this moment, right, market says, don't even think about looking for longs here. Momentum is to the downside and your entry would be anything below 28.8. Now the issue with crypto, the issue with a lot of stuff is oftentimes you'll see a, on a daily candlestick, right? You'll see us go drop like 20% in a day and it's like, okay, well now what? Uh, the system told me to enter and told me to wait for the candlestick. One thing you can do is use common sense, you know, for above or below, this was a wick. What was this? one and a quarter percent, something like that. You could say, well, we're 2% below the, the level, you know, use something that makes sense. You definitely have to get a feel for the market. Was there news? Is there something going on? Is DeFi exploding, right? Whatever it is. Let's go back to earlier this year, just again, implementing this fractal system. So as this is happening, right? Using this uh, replay as, as your gauge, as this is happening, the market is telling you based on the fractals prices, weaving into and above the fractals it's saying get ready to get long okay it's not saying to get long it's saying get ready right and then finally we start to get that cross and things look really good eventually but again this is a little bit late right if you're waiting for this setup specifically it's a little bit late that's why knowing chart patterns helps a lot knowing basic horizontal levels helps a lot one thing you can do to cheat this 
you know, I don't have the back test thing on this, so don't at me. But one thing you can do, right? Let's say we're we know we're about to look for longs. Where's the previous fractal, right? Well, here's the previous fractal. So we know we're looking for longs, anything above that level. And we're going to start adding to a position or opening a position with the assumption that this will be a continuation, but there's no guarantee, right? Now, obviously, if you're if you're looking between uh, time frames, one other thing you can do is use a higher time frame as your gauge for position sizing leverage. You know, if we're not bullish on the weekly yet, and we think we're about to be bullish on the daily, maybe you don't go 100x long just yet, right? Maybe you just tip, dip your toe in a little bit versus going full bore. So let's look at uh, this bearish example again with the fractals. I think this is just the easiest way to see what's going on. Uh, from both the entries and exits. And that's really where I think this shines is it gives you both a trailing and exit and trailing entry system. So in 2022, right, when things started to get uh, more and more bearish, this whole time, the system is telling you, yep, it's okay to be short, keep shorting, don't stop shorting. Hey, look, you finally got your move. Okay, now what do we do? Don't stop shorting. <laughs> it's These aren't entries here, but it's telling you this is the levels you need to see to short. Then finally, like I said earlier, uh, there's your stop loss, right? And what did the trailing stop losses look like for all this? Well, here was your stop loss. Here's your stop loss. Here's your stop loss. And it moves all the way down to here and then here and then here. And what do you know? The trailing stop loss is at the same level as the midline at that point. So but you very much should be out of your trade uh, there. Now, let's see, you caught this late, right? Well, here's your short entry signal, uh, but where's your actual short entry? You really maybe didn't get that till many days later, right? Depending on how you want to trade this. Now, maybe you, maybe you say, you know, short entry equals 50% of a position. Uh, that way it gives you room for successive entries, uh, you know, re-entry would be 10% size, so on and so on and so forth, right? That way it gives you some some room. Let's say you're blessed with, you know, five re-entries, right? Based on sizing. That way initially you're not just throwing your entire stack into a, a cross here. Now one other thing that Williams talks about is using something like the MACD, maybe not so much the RSI, but you certainly could use the RSI using basically the, the midpoint as part of that checks and balances system. So I want to see bearish alligator. I want to see fractals breaking down lower. I want to see RSI below 50. I want to see MACD uh, bearish declining in the red. I want to see all of that before I make an entry. Now, what did that look like You know, for this entry here? RSI was still above 50. MACD was red, continues to be red. Right. So depending on what you want to use, what you're comfortable with, it's entirely up to you. I'm not saying any of these is perfect, but if you want to add additional measures to your fish tank, right, and look at water quality, ammonia levels, add a bubbler, whatever. Right? If you want to add all these bells and whistles for your checklist and sort of hone it in to your personal level of trading, one thing you can do is use MACD or learn about the awesome oscillator, which is specifically what he talked about in his system. Um, let me just look at one other thing real quick. We'll look at ETH with this. We'll get rid of all that. Now with ETH, this looks incredibly messy just immediately, right? And to me in my head, I'm thinking, okay, a lot of these signals at this point, probably not too, too reliable, but it is saying we're leaning bearish, get ready for a short re-entry or a short entry at this point in time on the daily, right? What does that look like on the weekly? Weekly st still looks mildly bullish, and it's telling you, let's get an entry above whatever that is, 20, 2011, and let's say it's 2037. You know, if you want an exact level ever, by the way, what you can do is look at, I'm so bad at finding this stuff, go to uh, price label, sorry, and use the magnet. You get a specific level. Okay, the wick is 2029. We're going to have a stop limit trigger at 2025, a stop limit entry at 2030, right? If you want to play it that hyper specific with your bids, asks, whatever, totally can do that. Uh, the same applies 
on the downside, right? We can look at, there's our fractal 1622. So anything below 1623, we'd be stopped out. So we could say we want a stop limit trigger at 1618 and it gets put on the book at 1623. That's our stop loss, right? So there's definitely clever ways to play this. You know, it's funny because oscillators don't really help you here. Basically zeroed out, MACD effectively zeroed out, right? It doesn't really help you. And definitely signal essentially telling you, hey, there's there's nothing here. It's not a trend yet. Uh, just wait, wait for something. You know, we're not 2020, we're not 2018, and we certainly aren't uh, 2017 on the ETH side of things. So the best way to learn this, I think, is to use it in real time. Use it on a bunch of charts. Uh, I don't even know what's what's trending necessarily bullish right now. Let's just take a look at Matic, because why not? Matic is also leaning bearish, short entry at 52 cents, right? So much like the cloud, for me, just popping this on the chart, flipping between all the coins really helps see what's going on. Uh, one last, last thing I'll just mention, if we add the cloud to this, I actually like the fractals more than the alligator uh, because we can use that trailing entry trailing stop loss system with the cloud to give you additional levels for entries and exits so come on break out you go long trailing stop loss trailing stop loss trailing stop loss trailing stop loss you're out here all this whole time you've got bids on the key june right so just like now let's say you were long at 28 Trailing stop loss, trailing stop loss, trailing stop loss, trailing stop loss, trailing stop loss. Okay, we're out here. Bids were on the key the whole time. Now the cloud, unlike the alligator, is telling you it's still okay to be bullish here. It's still okay to look for longs, and your entry would be at 28.3. Same is true on the bullish side. Oftentimes, the daily cloud with these settings doesn't give you very many entries, and that isn't always a good thing. So let's look at the trailing entry system with this uh, fractal, 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 and there's your entry, right? Here was your stop loss. Now here's your re entry. Okay, we're still long. Nothing yet, nothing yet, and you get stopped out again so that you take a slight loss on. And then this whole fiasco is tough to play on, on anything, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because it is highly volatile, not exactly uh, trending. It's downtrending. The cloud still says look for longs, right? So that's tough. And this whole period has been tough because it's been a couple days of straight up and then straight sideways. And that's why you want to hold your chips tight to the vest, wait till there's an actual trend, and it's just so much easier to trade. All right, that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. I read all the comments, by the way. I respond to all the comments. Happy trading.